So today is February 1st, 2021. Welcome to Ram and to Aniket, who have been 320 days away from school. Is that possible? Yeah, almost more than 10 months, right? And uh, have returned, great. So normally we try to celebrate the learning of students at KC High during the assembly. Of course, we're missing the youngsters, the toddlers, the bunnies, the cool cats, etc. Because normally they would come up and share their learning with us. But instead, we get a peek into their classrooms through the wonders of modern technology. And you can see what the toddlers are up to, painting some of their favorite animals and looking at the patterns. So there you can see what are some of the favorite animals of the toddlers. I think you can see the stripes and the other patterns, zebras, giraffes, tigers, etc. Right? So that's called since we're talking a little bit about learning here, that's called a cognitive activator, trying to get the brain working instead of just having them listen to the teacher telling them about giraffes and zebras and tigers. They paint the patterns, and that gets the brain going, right? Uh, would you be kind? Oh, look, it's Republic Day. A Republic Day celebration with the tadpoles. And it looks like chilies, garlic, and carrots. Or kiwis, bananas, and oranges. That's pretty creative, you see? Now, there's a lot of research that will show that if you actually get them to make the colors of the flag themselves using fruits and vegetables, they're much more likely to remember the lesson than if they just sit passively and listen to the teacher talk. Does that make sense to you guys? Kiwi, of course, is not a fruit that's indigenous to India. Where is the kiwi from? You can call a friend if you like. <laughs> Choose one. Can you speak into the microphone? What's the answer to my quiz question? Where is the kiwi from, Aniket? Uh, the kiwi is from New Zealand. I think you called the right friend. Well done, Shreema. Uh Absolutely. That's why we sometimes call people from New Zealand kiwis. Capacity, sometimes called volume. Looks like the Bright Buddies have been measuring the capacity of various containers using non-traditional methods such as doll and grains and pulses. Uh, would you like to tell us, Aniket, what the cool cats have been up to? Um, as a part of the GP project, When I Am 64, the cool cats have been learning about the different life stages. And uh, they invited their parents, uh, to their, uh, their grandparents to their class, and asked them questions to learn more about them. That's a great lesson. We need more of that kind of stuff. Uh, the Leaping Lions, thank you, Aniket. The Leaping Lions are working on um, plants and animals, and they've written a nonfiction text about their favorite tool. They're, oh, they're looking at, uh, sorry, they're looking at Stone Age and 
the tools of the Stone Age. Where did I see plants and animals? Okay, so uh, they're digging and they're using spear. The spear and the knife seem to be two of their favorite tools. There's a club there as well. Interesting. In the Stone Age, weapons were very important tools. Ah, the dynamic dolphins. Again, Aniket, would you be kind enough? Um, so the dynamic dolphins um, uh, had a session with Mr. S. Sundaram, who is a retired principal of the Reliance Foundation School in Gujarat. And he spends his time conducting workshops for teachers and students of uh, primary and middle school. And they had uh, a session with him about the significance of Republic Day and the importance of a constitution. Thank you. Thank you, Anikit. What is a republic? What's the difference between a republic and a kingdom, for example? Anikit, you can call a friend if you like, but a different friend this time. <laughs> you can call Ganesh, for example. Uh, so since Rida just got here, why don't we ask Rida? Hi, Rida. Do you know the difference between a republic and a kingdom? Would you like to call a friend? Adisai? What does republic mean, do you know? Your sister taught me. This is good. Learning from young children is good. Uh, very good. So, actually, Republic, you're quite right there, um, Arisai. Republic me is a Latin word. Res publica means it's a public thing. It belongs to the people. A republic is a nation that belongs to the people, whereas a kingdom is a nation that belongs to the king or the royal family, right? Okay, so India belongs to the people of India, not to any particular king, right? And then the constitution outlined, okay, we'll get to the governance some other day. A nice lesson from the dynamic dolphins. I think your sister was a dolphin last year, right? Great, okay, good, good idea to learn from. The... Ah, she taught you, of course, your sister's now a galloping gazelle, and she taught you about uh, different styles of government, Gandhi and the types of government, etc. So that's a great method for learning conversations within the family. Uh, looks like the soaring seagulls have been looking at material changes and they created their own solar stills. Interesting. Heating up some water, I presume. And the sixth graders have been making paltoons. And now here's where the animals and plants are. They've been making paltoons about animals and plants, creating their own digital content. Marine habitats, the cacti, there we go, another Latin word. I, when I was at school, they made me study Latin. Well, they didn't make me, actually. I chose it. I know you think I probably went to school during the Roman Empire, but I'm not quite that old. <laughs> ah, in addition to Latin, I took some French. Aujourd'hui, je vais faire des drames au dur de cacahuète. Peanut butter and peanut butter brownies. They made some peanut butter brownies in French. Looks like they're making their favorite foods. These are the seventh graders. 
Looks like they got some peanut butter cookies in there as well. Ratatouille, gratin de pommes de terre. Any French students want to translate for us? Yes, Nani? Looks like some cheesy potato things. Okay. <laughs> Next, population distribution. This is the seventh graders again in their geography class. They're learning about migration. Migration, of course, is a big issue all around the world. They learned how to read world maps. So I've got another question for you, Aniket. Looking at this world map, what do you think the colors signify? You can see some dark colors over here and some light colors down here. Um, the colors signify the population density. Very good, Ani Kit. Are you in geography? Yeah. That's good. That's good. As you can see, where are the most densely populated parts of the Earth? The eastern chief seaboard of China, North India, and what are the least densely populated parts of Earth? Aniket? Um, it seems to be in like North Africa and in Northern Russia. That would be the Sahara Desert, yeah. Siberia, of course, Antarctica, Greenland, and large parts of Australia as well. Thank you, Aniket. Sounds like geography is going pretty well for you. And now the ninth graders learning, this is in Hindi class, I believe, learning how, learning about India, and they wrote a letter to their favorite freedom fighter. Wow. Looks good. And they learned some interesting facts about India. I, I don't know how to read Hindi. Anybody want to help? No volunteers? Nika? No? Okay. Uh, Note-taking. Sessions on note-taking and mind mapping and the Cornell method, all things that we should be learning about in this class as well. Uh, flow notes and flow charts. Very good. Who's teaching that? Utra. Fantastic. Okay. Oh yeah, Utra is doing it. Yeah. I see mirrors in the class as well. Nice mind map. What is this? I can't see. I, I don't think it's... It looks like some kind of professional mind map. And the 10th graders, here we are. What are you, well, you guys have been learning about COVID, right? Yes? Nadia? And there, there they are. There's a picture of you up there, and there you are in the live. Okay? Um, you had a quiz, which was received with a lot of cheer. And you're speaking about global issues as well, I believe, right? And the 11th graders are learning about the extended essay. What is it and why should I care? It's a big part of your education over the next two years. And it is a, an introduction to academic research, okay? And you guys, part of the, what we'll be talking about today is you guys should start thinking about what area of academics am I most interested in? In student clubs, uh, look at this beautiful collection of art patches. It's not there yet. There it is. Wow. That's from students in visual arts from grades six through 11, 
and we're, they're going for four feet by seven feet with 194 patches. Lovely, isn't it? Well done uh, to the art students. Reminds me of the AIDS quilt from many years ago. Uh, for CAS, Creativity, Activities, and Service, you can see some KC High students there working on cleaning up the Hiranandani backwaters every Saturday from 7 in the morning to 8 in the morning. Uh, that's Raji Anti. That's your email, Raji? Yeah. Raji, so if you want to participate, please send an email to Raji. And on February 13th, which is a Saturday, we have a virtual lot up, okay? So your parents will be invited to see what you're doing and you will be asked to sit with your parents and explain to them some of the things you're learning. Okay, great. Have a nice day, everyone. I see your plan up there. I guess that's it for the virtual assembly, Preet.